Um, and um, we, I think at the end of the day, the final goal is that we are committed to helping the TNC pave a path to peaceful, inclusive democracy. I, none, none of us can predict what that democracy is going to look like. Uh, it's probably going to be messy uh, as they try to put this country uh, together again. They're going to have to create an NGO uh, society. They're going to have to create new institutions. Uh, but their commitment seems to be uh, to a democracy of some kind. And I think that we've seen from the first days of the TNC, uh, you know, assuming authority in places like Benghazi and other areas in the country, that the Libyans seem to have an idea of what democracy is. Certainly in those first several weeks, we saw, you know, debates taking place about what a constitution is, what democracy should be. We saw tens of newspapers um, you know, uh, published. We saw an NGO, uh, NGO springing up in the hundreds. Uh, so it, it seems that they do have a sense of what democracy is and that the, uh, the TNC leadership will have to kind of harness that and see what makes sense within the, uh, what will be the new Libyan uh, political and economic uh, and social fabric. Let me say a few words about planning. Uh, I know that there's been a lot of questions, uh, certainly I've received a lot, and I think there's been a lot of questions directed at just what kind of planning was done, uh, uh, you know, in terms of this uh, crisis. And from the start, I think that we uh, we had an advantage, in fact, in Washington, because I had my embassy team uh, basically transported back uh, en masse, and we were able to work together out of the State Department. And so we kept, you know, we, we exploited that knowledge uh, on the ground that we had. Uh, we then worked with uh, the interagency process here to basically lay out various scenarios that we thought would play out uh, in Libya, from the worst uh, to the best. Uh, in fact, the one that's played out is kind of the next to next to worst. I mean, the worst obviously would have been a Gaddafi uh, leaving or, or being, you know, uh, being overthrown uh, in in Tripoli, but ending in an apocalyptic rage of some kind and bringing down the you know, the oil resources and, and, and really doing damage to the country's infrastructure, which did not happen. The speed with which the, uh, the opposition forces went into Tripoli, in effect, uh, precluded or, or prevented that kind of um, apocalyptic scenario. But we did have an idea of the different issues that, that, that we would face and that the TNC would face and that the international community would face. And I think, by and large, um, uh, you know, after uh, after we had uh, done our, our planning within the U.S. government, we then hooked up with the U.N., with Ian Martin, and then beyond that we went to the EU, and then finally we went to the, um, the TNC planning cell, which at that time, uh, several weeks ago, was in Doha. And I think that all of us were uh, quite pleasantly surprised that the, the, uh, the TNC group had done an amazing amount of planning. Uh, much along the lines of uh, of what we had been doing, and so we were able to kind of compare notes on what kinds of political issues they would face, what kind of um, social issues, economic issues, messaging, all these different things that all, that we had taken into account um, in the planning phase, they had also done, and we were able to kind of fill in the, each other's gaps. So I'm not sure that at this point we can definitively say that the planning process uh, that we all engaged in is, in fact, uh, paying dividends now. But I think that uh, there are some issues that are being brought to the fore now, which were considered previously and which are being uh, played out now. For example, uh, on the proliferation of weapons, uh, we, we all recognize that this was an issue that needed to be dealt with, and I think the TNC certainly is aware of it. And uh, at some point over the next few weeks, I think you'll see efforts being made to decommission the militias and to, um, you know, to get people to turn in their, their weapons and to bring those militias, which had been heretofore been independent during the six months, bring them under a, a national security force uh, of some kind or other. Uh, WMD, you've seen, and, and the uh, other, other weapons, you've seen a lot of concern, uh, I think, in the news that what's happened to the sites that were under the uh, supposed uh, guard of, uh, you know, Gaddafi and, uh, and some of the CW sites and the SCUDs, et cetera, et cetera. And we had also, in our planning and, and in their planning as well, had uh, considered the, what needed to be done. And um, right now we have a uh, we have people there on the ground. The TNC is working very closely with the international community to make sure that those sites uh, are are secured. 
Um, on the other question, for example, of man pads and um, and other uh, uh, weapons that might be uh, you know proliferated, uh, they've taken the same attitude. So I think that all of the planning that we had done is kind of uh, playing itself out. Uh, we also noted that uh, the the problem of uh, African migrants uh, in Libya could be a problem because. Uh, uh, you know, we had predicted, and I think that it didn't take a genius to figure this out, that a lot of the wrath of Libyans would be directed against uh, uh, black Africans who were seen as uh, having played a part in terms of mercenaries and all. And we are now working, uh, after having received, I think, fairly credible reports from international organizations, that there was some, that there has been an ongoing sense of mistreatment uh, of some of the of the black Africans. We are now uh, very intensively engaged with the TNC and with the uh, international community, including the IOM and the UN, uh, to make sure that we get some protection and uh, we figure out a solution to to bring these uh, migrants uh, out of harm's way. We don't think that it's uh, obviously a system systematic approach by the TNC, but it's being done by their cadres at a, at a lower level who just don't have a sense of, you know, of what is fair play and uh, what, how do you not accuse uh, a whole, uh, you know, race of, of thing, of, uh, of, um, of uh, atrocities that can, can be attributed possibly to only a few of them. So we're working very carefully with them. Uh, I think that in, in talking to the TNC, I think at least some of their priorities include, number one, um, pursuing Gaddafi. Uh, I think this is very important to them, obviously, uh, to put him on trial. There will be a lingering problem, I think, as long as uh, he is free. Number two, uh, I think they're very geared towards stabilization uh, and providing security and providing a new regime of the rule of law. Um, they have posited the possibility of establishing special courts for those who've committed crimes. Demilitar demilitarizing the militias, as I've mentioned, um, and uh, to work with some members of the Gaddafi regime, if possible, uh, if they're proven not to have had blood on their hands. Uh, I think the TNC is always looking for a way to, also looking for a way to compensate those who have uh, the families of martyrs who played a role uh, in this revolution, um, and also to uh, come up with a budget process that will prioritize uh, public services, public salaries, uh, and rebuilding and upgrading infrastructure and housing and utilities. So they have a, they have a massive uh, uh, challenge ahead of them. Uh, the United States certainly, along with its, uh, its allies, will, will, will do what we can. Um, uh, we're not going to be engaged in the kind of nation building that we were either in uh, Iraq or Afghanistan. I mean, it's clear that uh, the, uh, uh, we don't have the resources to do that, and this situation doesn't really lend itself to that. The TNC, by its own statements, have said that they are not looking for a massive uh, handouts or massive uh, um, you know, financial infusions from the international community. They're looking for training. Uh, and they're looking for help in, in helping to set up the institutions that they know are, are, are necessary in order for them to build uh, their new country. So with that, um, I, I, I think that we're, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. I think we're all looking forward to going back at some point. Uh, this has been a tremendous uh, opportunity for us to watch this brave people, I think, who are going to serve as a model for historians for hundreds of years to come who took the courage and, and actually, you know, over, overthrew this uh, dictator. Uh, we now have a, a very uh, important role to play, I think, in, in helping them according to the kind of needs that they will lay out for us in trying to help build this uh, new society. And I think at the end of the day uh, that certainly uh, the international community and certainly we as Americans uh, can be very proud uh, of the role that we have played in this I think we stand, uh, our, our, our reputation in Libya is, uh, is, is very well thought of. Uh, I look forward to hopefully uh, helping uh, American companies and uh, get back into Libya because I think they have the expertise uh, that the Libyans will need. Uh, but we will, we will take this. The, the key to this is that it's going to be Libyan-led, and we're not going to dictate the terms of, of, of how they should proceed, but we'll be there uh, should they need our help.